Hey there, welcome back to another episode of the Blogger Breakthrough Summit podcast. I'm your host, Liz Stapleton, and today we're diving into the incredible session by Brenda Cadman at the 2024 Blogger Breakthrough Summit. We'll be diving into the world of Canva organization. Yes, you heard me right. With these tips from Brenda, you'll be able to tackle that digital jungle and turn it into an oasis. So let's briefly walk through the steps to batch organize inside Canva. If you've ever hovered over a Canva designer image, you'll have noticed that a checkbox appears and that you can select multiple designs or images at a time by checking off those checkboxes. When you select multiple files, you'll notice that a folder icon appears in the bottom middle of the page next to a trash icon. When you hover over that folder icon, it will say move to folder. And when you click on the folder icon, you will have the ability to choose which folder to move the designs to. You can locate a folder through this area called Recent, which shows the most recently accessed folders, or you can browse through all of your project folders to find the desired folder, or you can search for a desired folder by searching on the folder name in this search bar. Once you've chosen the destination folder, you'll simply click on the option to move the files, and then Canva will move all of those files off of your projects page and into your chosen folder. If you find that when you move files into a folder, it's not actually moving off of the main projects page, there are a couple of things I want you to try for troubleshooting. First, try refreshing your browser tab after you've moved files to see if that files them away into the folders, and often it does. Same thing if you've deleted files from your projects page and you're not seeing them delete right away. Sometimes it just needs a page refresh to show the update. The second thing you can try is to make sure that this filter area on the projects page is set to show only your designs and not any designs shared with you. So you can see how I filtered my projects here to only show designs and media from the Brenda Cadman account. So let's move on to do a quick overview of a framework that you can use to help you get organized in Canva. When I teach how to get organized in my Clean Up My Canva course, I teach two different methods. First is the tackle the mess approach, which is for those folks who are ready to organize all of their existing designs and images and to create an intuitive Canva organization system. And depending on how many designs and images you have in your account, this could be a potentially time-consuming project, though still very worthwhile. And if you have the bandwidth to do this, it is the approach that I definitely recommend. The second option is the start fresh method. One of the biggest reasons that folks who know they need to get organized in Canva and who want to get organized but still haven't done it is because they have an absolutely overwhelming backlog of designs and images. So this is the option for those Canva users who feel like their account is an organizational pit of despair and who have zero energy to organize it, but who want to be organized going forward. What I want to do in this video is to give you a quick overview of the tackle the mess approach, because since you're watching this training today, that likely means you already have a hot mess account that you would like to impose some order on. So I'm going to walk you through five steps, and once you're comfortable with the organizing process, you will likely find that you're able to do more than one step concurrently. But I'd suggest breaking it down into steps when you're new to the process. The first step is focused on deleting and archiving your unneeded Canva designs and images. If you were organizing piles of paper in an office or a filing cabinet, you would start by disposing of the papers that you no longer need. You would also archive into long-term storage the documents that you may need for reference, but that you're no longer actively using. The same process applies for your digital content, including your Canva designs. So I'd recommend you take a stroll down Canva memory lane and review all of the designs in your Canva account delete any of the designs that you know you don't need. So for example, you may have copies of the templates you never ended up using, duplicates of designs you thought you would need but didn't, designs that are super outdated that you know you won't need, and so on. For those of you who are afraid to let go of any designs, in case you might need it in the future, I would encourage you to create an archive folder and then move all of those but what if I need it down the road designs into that folder. If you haven't needed to access those archive designs in the next year, chances are good that you will feel safer doing a purge of them down the road. 
Next up is to do a review of what's left in your Canva account after you've finished deleting and archiving and to update your naming conventions. If you're like most Canva users, you probably have a lot of designs named things like copy of template XYZ or design version two and design version three and version four, etc. Or you've labeled it with a really generic name like Instagram post without providing any further description about which Instagram post it is, should you want to find it later. It's important to name your files in a descriptive manner so that you can easily tell at a glance what all of your designs are from the outside. And also so you can more easily search for your designs using the Canva search bar. And as I said, once you're comfortable using the organization features in Canva, you're going to be able to do more than one step concurrently. So for example, while I'm working through an account to delete or archive content, I might simultaneously be renaming designs. Your third step is going to be to plan and create your folders. Write down a list of all the categories and subcategories you think you'll need to organize your designs, your images, and your video. There is no one-size-fits-all solution about how to break down your folders within Canva. Some of you will only need a small handful of folders. Others will need a really robust filing system. As an example, my own Canva account is broken down into multiple folders, as you can see here, and then those primary folders are further broken down into subfolders as needed. I would recommend not having more top level folders than you can see without scrolling. I have 12 and I find that 12 to 13 is usually the maximum that feels manageable before you start having too many choices and feeling overwhelmed. Once you have your initial list of folders, you can start actually creating your custom folders and subfolders in order to begin building your own Canva filing cabinet. Or you may find it makes more sense to create your folders as you go through the category creation process, whatever feels most natural for you. Once you've got your folders set up so that your designs and images all have homes, you can use the batch organizing technique that I talked about earlier in order to begin moving all of your files into your new folders. And one of the best ways to start this process is to look for categories of designs where you know there's going to be large chunks that you can move at a time. For example, if I'm doing an organization VIP day for a graphic designer that I know has tons of designs and assets for clients, I will start by selecting anything that I know can go into that top level clients folder. I'm not going to worry at this stage about only selecting designs for a specific client. I'll tackle that later when I go through the clients folder. To start, you're just trying to organize your designs and images into those top level categories, and then you can work your way down. And your final step will be to maintain your organization. Once you finish getting through the first four steps of this process, your organization system should be in good shape, but even the best system will fall apart if you don't maintain your Canva account. You can create a recurring task on your calendar or your project management tool of choice to do your Canva organization on a weekly or bi-weekly or even a monthly basis. All right, and there you have it. Follow these steps and you'll have a Canva account that's organized. Remember, the key is consistency. Keep at it in your digital workspace will be every bit as inspiring as your creative projects. Thanks for tuning in to the Blogger Break the Summit podcast. If you found this episode helpful, don't forget to subscribe and share it with your fellow bloggers. Until next time, happy organizing. As always, you can learn more about our incredible speakers in the show notes. So go check them out.